Now let's talk about mesh analysis applied to the circuit with the super mesh. The question is to use mesh analysis to find currents I1 and I2 in the given circuit. And of course the first step is to assign the mesh currents. We can see that there is a three meshes, so we'll make the mesh currents as I1 for first mesh, I2 for the second mesh and I3 for mesh number 3. And again, to make everything convenient, we'll assign the direction of the mesh current as clockwise. The question is to find mesh uh, currents I1 and I2 in the given circuit. The question is to use mesh analysis to find currents I1 and I2 in the given circuit. And as always, we're starting mesh analysis uh, by assigning the mesh currents. We can see that there are three meshes in the circuit. Let's call them. The first mesh with the mesh current I1. The second mesh with the mesh current I2. And the mesh number three with the mesh current I3. Uh, to make everything convenient, we'll make mesh currents going clockwise, in the clockwise direction. But the interesting thing that between mm, mesh 2 and 3, we have 5 amps current source. Because the mesh analysis is the application of the Kirchhoff's voltage law, so we're interested in the adding up all the voltages in the loop, and we can see that we don't know exactly what's the voltage across um, 5 amps current source. So in this case, uh, instead of using three meshes, uh, the mesh 2 and 3 is assigned as the super mesh. So these two meshes, I2 and I3, will be treated together as the whole a super mesh. Um, now let's start writing mesh equations and it will be easier to see what's the difference in writing the equation for super mesh. But before we start, we'll, let's write the equation for mesh 1. So for mesh 1 would be the equation. Again, um, looking into the, into the direction of the mesh current and we are going clockwise in this direction, start with 24 volts. Uh, we are moving from minus to plus, so we put negative 24. Then continue going through 10 ohms resistor plus 10 I1, mesh current I1. Then we have plus 40. And what we can see, in 40 ohms resistor there are two currents, I1 going the current I1 uh, going clockwise and I2 anticlockwise, so the opposite direction. So that's why we need to put I1 minus I2 equals 0. So this is the equation for mesh 1. Now we need to write uh, the equation for super mesh. Uh, what's the difference? When we write equation for super mesh, so we need to write the equation for the whole super mesh. But we don't we, we do not ignore the currents I2 and I3. So they should be in the same equation. How to do this? So let's start again with uh, current with 20 ohm resistor, so from this point. What do we have at 20 ohms? 20 and the current I2. Then, following by this direction, we go into 30 ohm resistor. So we put plus 30. Now we put I3. Then 
moving to the next resistor is 20 ohms so we put plus 20 I3 and the last resistor it is 40 so plus 40 and again there are two currents the current I2 going this way and the I1 going the opposite direction so we put I2 minus I1 equals 0 now let's simplify these two equations so these two equations we received from uh, equation for mesh 1 and equation for super mesh but looking at these two equations we still can't solve them why because they have three unknowns first of all we don't know the mesh current i1 we don't know the mesh current i2 and we also don't know the mesh current i3 so we have three unknowns and only one and two equations so what we can do we need to create one more equation from the current source of 5 amps how to do this let's look into the upper node this node where are the 5 amps coming in so I just draw this node larger so this is the node the current of 5 amps coming into the node and what other two currents actually belongs to this node this is the current I2 this current look it's also coming into the node so we put the arrow in and that will be current I2 and also there is the current I3 going out from the node so it goes this way current I3 applying Kirchhoff's current law to this node and we know that the all currents coming into the node equals to the sum of all currents leaving the node we can see that I2 plus 5 equals I3 uh, so basically this is our equation number 3 we created and what we can do we can substitute I3 in equation uh, number 2 by this number as I2 plus 5 and then we'll create two equations with only two unknowns so this is our two equations and we can see that by replacing mesh current i3 by i2 plus 5 we created two equations with two unknowns so, so, so there are only i1 and i2 unknowns and it is easily to solve these equations so solving uh, these equations we can get the mesh currents I1, I2 and I3. So as the result of the solution, I1 is equal to negative 1.89 amps. I2 is negative 2.96. And the mesh current I3 equals to positive 2.041 amps and once we found all three mesh currents we pretty much can finish the question and answer what would be the currents i1 and i2 in the circuit so again looking into current i1 this is the current i1 uh, there are two currents which contribute to the total value of the current i1 this is mesh current i1 and the mesh current i2 so looking into the direction of the current I1, we can see that the current I1 is equals to the current the, to the mesh current I1 minus mesh current I2. So which means that it will be mesh current I1 is negative 1.89 minus mesh current I2, so minus minus 2.96 and the answer for that is 1.07 amps and 
the last question is to find current I2. So what would be the value of current I2? Again, looking into that current, we can see that the current I2 is the same as the mesh current I3. So it's the single current in the branch and it flows in with the same direction as the mesh current I3. So easy to say that I2 is the same as mesh current I3 and that equals to 2.0.41 amps. So now um, we found both currents I1 and I2 and we finished the question.